We're going to just touch on section 1.3. I think it's section 1.3, which is existence and uniqueness theorems. So this class, I mean, is not primarily a pure math class. Differential equations is not I mean, the way people research it, there are lots of theorems and stuff, but differential equations is a branch of applied mathematics, and that's what we'd like to look at mainly. But I would like to sort of float the question, does the, here's a standard abbreviation, initial value problem, IVP, does the IVP dy dx equals f of x comma y have a unique solution always. I've called this an initial value problem. It will become an initial value problem once I add the initial value. Um, probably not. You know, even here, I mean, this is a special case because we don't have any y's on the right. We just have x's, and even so, we had some kind of condition that we needed to satisfy. We had a continuity condition. So it's presumably not realistic to expect this question to be answered in the affirmative. I mean, dy dx equals 1 divided by x, y of 0 equals 1. We're not, we're not totally cheating here. I mean, of course, if you plug x equals 0 into dy dx, you get the division by 0 error, so the derivative doesn't exist. But that doesn't mean that y, the function, can't exist. I mean, maybe y looks like this. And at 0, the derivative doesn't exist, but y is still a perfectly nice function. However, that, that doesn't happen. I mean, this... has a solution. We can know what the solution looks like. Um, if we integrate both sides, the integral of 1 over x is that natural log. So we know what y looks like, and we know that y of 0 does not exist. The natural logarithm of zero is not defined. So here's an example where we have a function, we have an initial value problem, 
and the initial value problem doesn't have any kind of solution. So, when would the answer to this question be yes? When is the answer in the affirmative? This is one of the relatively rare sort of theorems that we're going to prove in this, not prove, that we're going to state in this course. Or at least we're going to state a lot of theorems, but it's going to be relatively rare that we sort of use that terminology. Theorem. This, let's see, make sure I get my logic correct. If f of x comma y and this is the only partial derivative that's going to show up in this course. The partial derivative of this function f of x comma y with respect to y are both continuous on some rectangle containing the point A comma B then this initial value problem has a unique solution. And as I say, this is really the only part in the class where we'll have partial derivatives. It's the only face in the class where we'll be talking about continuity on the plane, which is also from Calculus 3. So if you struggled in Calc 3, don't stress this too much. But, but just as an example, suppose dy dx equals x times the sine of y. And we're given an initial condition. Let's see, y of 0 equals 3. We don't know how to solve this differential equation. Uh, we'll actually learn how to solve it early next week. But for now, we don't know how to solve it. But we can still ask whether a solution exists or not. Um, So, x times the sine of y is continuous. I mean, it's continuous on all of the Cartesian plane. x is a continuous function. The sine of y is a continuous function. Their product is continuous. So 
This is continuous everywhere. The partial derivative with respect to y. Treat x as a constant, so we don't use the product rule. It just sits there. x times the cosine of y. is also continuous on all of the plane. And continuous on all of the plane is way more than we need for this theorem to work. All we need for this theorem to work is for these to be continuous on a rectangle surrounding this point, surrounding the point 0, 3. So these functions are both continuous on this rectangle, so this initial value problem has a unique solution. Compare that. Let's see. I, there. Compare that to dy dx equals one divided by x with this initial condition y of zero equals one. Well, F, come on. So first of all, I mean, we can think of this as a function of x and y. I mean, the y isn't doing anything, so it's constant with respect to y. But f of x comma y equals 1 divided by x is not defined at the point 0, 1. So if it's not defined, it's certainly not continuous, meaning that we don't have the conditions of the theorem. We cannot use the theorem to tell us that an, a solution exists, and a solution does not exist. If I change this a little, maybe let's have that as our initial condition y of 3 equals 1. Well now, f of x comma y is continuous on a rectangle containing the point 3, comma, 1. So thinking of this as a function in the Cartesian plane, this function gives us a division by zero error on that axis. It's not defined when x equals 0, but it's defined everywhere else. So we've got this point, 3, 1. We can draw a rectangle surrounding that point that doesn't hit that axis, 
It's continuous on that rectangle. Um, the partial derivative with respect to y is just zero. That's certainly continuous everywhere. So this initial value problem does have a unique solution. So, I mean, sort of memorizing this and using it can be a pain, especially, as I say, if you know Calc 3 was a while ago or as often happens if you struggled with Calc 3 a little. But, um, but sort of the take-home message here, I mean, most of the functions we work with in our day-to-day -day existence are continuous. I mean, polynomials are continuous on their domain. All of the trig functions are continuous on their domain. The power functions, the logarithms, the exponential functions, the hyperbolic trig functions, the inverse trig functions. And then their derivatives are also continuous almost everywhere. So in the vast majority of cases, if we're dealing with these standard functions, we can just sort of assume that a solution exists. We don't have to worry that we're going to run into differential equations and then like, we'll spend all this time trying to study their solution, and actually they don't have a solution. So that's, from a mathematical point of view, that's not a big problem. And from a non-mathematical point of view, it's not a big problem because you're studying real-world situations. So like, if your function is the position of a spring, well, I mean, that function definitely exists, right? You can take a real world spring and you can stretch it out and it has a real world position. So, of course, the function for the position exists. So, aside from 10 minutes or whatever in this class, that's basically the only consideration we're going to give to existence and uniqueness. We're just going to assume that the differential equations we look at have unique solutions or rather that the differential equations we look at have infinite solutions, but the initial values then make them unique. With, what, 15 minutes left? Let's not start the next section. Let's just call this, and I will see. We, of course would not have met Monday anyway.